Hey, I'm Dev Patel. We're on set of my new movie, Monkey Man. My directorial debut. Word has it on the street that Dev Patel has gone on the record to say that he wants to be in a rom-com. And after watching Monkey Man, I can say that he knows we, the romance girlies, want him in one too. Find a nickel for every time I got in a fist fight during a chick flick. Hi, I'm Lady Genevieve, and on my channel I like to talk about entertainment media. In today's video, I'm going to review Dev Patel's directorial debut, Monkey Man, and I'm also going to talk about how Hollywood needs to stop sleeping on him and put him in a rom-com. The first part of the video will be mostly spoiler-free, the rest of it will have all the spoilers, and that will also include me explaining why Monkey Man is clear proof that Dev Patel needs to be a rom-com leading man. But first, a cat cutaway. Look at how cute the cats are. If you're new here, this is Yuki and her baby. Marilyn and Monroe. I'm fostering them for just a couple more weeks and then everyone will be getting adopted. Monkey Man is an action thriller revenge film starring, directed by, and co-written by Dev Patel. This movie is for the Eat the Rich girlies, so unsurprisingly, I loved it. The basic premise is that Dev Patel plays the protagonist. I don't think he's ever officially named, but if you look online, his character is simply listed as Kid, which I'm presuming is a reference to the fact that Kid's backstory is the driving force of his journey and the story as a whole. You get a lot of flashes of what happened to him when he was just a kid. Something bad happened, something involving him and his mother, and it's not really a big spoiler for me to say that because the trailer has Dev saying a line that more or less declares that to be a central focus for his character. <laughs> the film is set in India, but was filmed in Indonesia. I don't know all of what went into that decision. I don't know the process for obtaining permits to film. I do hope that Indian creators on YouTube will do some videos about the film, explaining different things to do with various cultural references. There are things to do with different stories that are told and also artwork that is seen at different points throughout the film and paintings. I would love to know more about those those details and what they may offer to the overall narrative because it felt like there was a fair bit of subtext that I didn't quite catch. That's not a criticism of the film whatsoever, but considering that I don't like to look up spoilers before watching a film that I'm highly anticipating, which was definitely the case for Monkey Man. Even if Dev himself were to have explained a lot of these things in interviews, I wouldn't know any of that yet because I don't want to look at interviews either until after I've watched the thing. So if I find some free time, I may go and look up some of those interviews to see what I can learn. Hanuman is a god in the Hindu mythology that is half monkey, half human. He symbolizes strength, courage. Kindness. As a general point of feedback, I have to say that I'm very impressed with Dev Patel. For this to be his first time directing a feature film, he did very well. There was such a clear vision for the look of the film, how the action should be showcased, how to convey the emotional dramatic weight of the story, and all the things that were weighing heavily on Kid. I've long been a huge fan of the action genre, and I wanted to infuse it with some culture and social resonance. I think the easiest way to provide spoiler-free feedback would be to start Start from the most superficial layer and work our way inward. First things first, the look of the film. This was such a beautiful film to look at. I've never been to India myself, so I wouldn't be able to nitpick how India actually looks. But if I think about my very superficial idea of India, I do think of vibrant colors that you might see in clothing or in food and in nature. And I definitely love the way color was used in Monkey Man. Even early on, I want to say it was only a couple of minutes into the runtime and you saw Dev Patel walking down a hallway and he turned a corner and continued down another portion of hallway. And when he's in the first bit of hallway, there's this orange lighting, but when he turns the corner, that portion of hallway has this sort of greenish, tealish lighting, and I love seeing stuff like that. And that was by no means the only time that we got pretty lighting to look at. Once you're in the third act, there was some gorgeous lighting. We saw red, pink, purple, and I just really feel like the business people that have infiltrated show business, especially in Hollywood as of late, with their direct-to-streaming cost-cutting nonsense, they really don't understand how important lighting is for the cinematic experience. And I know this to be the case because they consistently do not give enough money to direct to streaming releases to afford high quality lighting. Lighting is expensive. You have the lights themselves, the electricity to make the lights run, the manual labor of setting up lights and the extra hours that add up over the timeline of a production to set up lights, to move them, depending on which character you're filming. It's just a lot of moving parts, but these things matter tremendously. <laughs> 
Dev Patel is one of the best directors in a first time film that I've seen. The cinematography was also really fun. It was incredibly dynamic. If you've seen that one clip from the trailer that was going viral when the film's trailer was first released of Dev doing a fight scene in a kitchen, the camera moves to track the movement of certain fight choreography and that again is stuff that I love to see. <laughs> Also, there was a point where Dev's character, Kid, is feeling incredibly emotionally stressed out and then the camera goes deliberately in and out of focus to give you this first person perspective of being in his headspace, of not really being able to see straight because he's so emotionally and psychologically overwhelmed. Also, the editing was impeccable. If this had been edited badly, it would have become very hard to follow because they don't actually show you a full, here's what happened in Kid's childhood until much later on in the run time. For a lot of the time that you're following Kid, you're only getting these brief flashes of memories from his childhood. Sometimes they're happy memories, but other times they're flashing bits of trauma of whatever horrific thing it is that happened to him and his mother. But you still can't help but be invested in Kid regardless of that. It makes sense even if you don't have all of that information right from the start. And that's down to Dev's acting, of course, but the editing matters so that things can still feel cohesive and make sense to the audience. The action, to no one's surprise, is fantastic. Fantastic. The whole running headline for Monkey Man from the very beginning has been Dev Patel wanted to be an action star and Hollywood was not offering him a gig like that. So he just developed this project himself. And as a physical performer, it's like, holy shit because I can't do that. Dev Patel has martial arts training. Now, I don't know if it's just in Taekwondo or if it's a more multifaceted training than that, but that training is very evident. It's the same way we've started to see more stunt performers transition from that job into directing and yielding some pretty remarkable work in the action genre. Chad Stahelski, David Leach, but with Dev, the expansion is sort of in a different direction because he's always been on camera as an actor, but now he gets to expand his creative tendrils into having so much more say about this project as a whole and for him to not only be physically capable of performing stunts but for Dev to also have this passion for the artistry of action means that the visual presentation of the film's action is simply on another level. You can actually follow the movements so that you can understand what's happening without a bunch of choppy unnecessary cuts but the choices he makes for how to frame things what he shows and what he doesn't show moments where the action is shown from a particular perspective there are just so many great choices for the action and if dev decides he would like to do another action film i say we let him get to work cut the check and leave him alone until it's finished this is a revenge film about faith I felt a huge responsibility to the mythology that this story is based on. The final point of feedback in the spoiler-free section is that I really, unsurprisingly, loved the film's commentary, as well as the layered approach to the storytelling. My mother used to tell me a story of the protector of the people. So on a micro level, you have a deeply sad, emotionally wounded man who wants to avenge his mother. But on a macro level, you can observe a clear authorial intent from Dev Patel as the architect of the story to call out systemic injustices. Now, before I expand upon that point, I want to quickly address something. When I posted about being excited to see Monkey Man, I had some people responding that they didn't want Dev Patel to talk about India because he grew up in England. And the impression I got was that people did not want to see any sort of negative view of India to be presented to people outside of India. I want to be clear about where I'm coming from as a viewer so that nobody misunderstands me. I love a good eat the rich story. Now, whether you do an eat the rich story set on Turtle Island, England, Italy, the middle of the ocean, or an alien planet, I consistently have a good time with a well-executed eat the rich story. Monkey Man is an eat the rich story, and it's also a fictional movie intended to entertain its audience with a compelling drama, exciting action, and yes, really pretty lighting. Anyone with common sense and even an ounce of literacy about global geopolitics is not going to watch Monkey Man and presume that they now know anything and everything about the current state of affairs in India. Monkey Man is a fictional film. It's not a piece of investigative journalism, nor is it a documentary. I did not watch this film and then walk out thinking that I now knew everything about India as a result. I walked out of the film thinking three things. One, I hope Indian YouTube creators will make some videos explaining some of these stories told by Kid's mother when he was growing up and also the artwork seen in paintings. Number two, Dev Patel needs to make more movies. And number three, Dev Patel needs to be in a rom-com. With all of that said, back to my original point about layered storytelling. A lot of screen time goes to things like kid planning, 
training, observing, infiltrating, and of course, fighting. Kid is a man who is first and foremost concerned with avenging his mother. There are some opinions he seems to have about the inequality he observes. In this city, the rich don't see us as people. But a lot of what you're meant to glean comes from Dev's performance and the way things are edited together. Kid will observe something unjust and then look very upset about that. But there is no mistaking that there are larger intentions from Dev Patel, and I really want to make this point clear. The things he is addressing are not things that are isolated to just India. The film is calling out many issues. It's not anti-religion, it's anti-people trying to weaponize religion into a tool to justify settler colonialism. Every day, I've prayed for a way to protect the weak. Kid's character is religious. His mother was shown to be religious. Kid finds community with other religious people. But yes, there is a villain character who claims to have the moral high ground because of their claims of being a spiritual person. But really, it's the film calling out things like settler colonialism, the exploitation of women, and transphobia. But also, this movie said f*** the police. Do you know how refreshing it is to get to watch an action film without it being propaganda? This movie said, in no uncertain terms, when you live in a place with systemic inequality enshrined into legislation. The police are not your friends. Dev Patel, you are invited to brunch with the girls forever and always. We have mimosas and we trash talk the empire. There's a shot from the film that was shown in a trailer or some other promotional material, so I feel like I can say this without it being a spoiler. There's this point in the film where Kid is riding by and the camera stays lingering on a group of people sleeping on strips of cardboard on the ground. This shot is the sort of thing that gives a window into the film's perspective of empathy. It's all over the place. Kid is full of rage and he wants to get vengeance, but he never loses his humanity in the process. It's just a really gorgeous story and I loved watching it. They don't even see us. They're all up there, living. I stuck here in this. But now, of course, I want to talk about spoilers. I will talk about things mostly in sequential order, so some of what I say will be feedback about the film itself, and some of what I say will just be me making my insistent claims that Monkey Man is proof that Dev Patel needs to be in a rom-com. So the film opens with a story about a monkey eating the sun, but the way that it's told, the monkey thought that he was eating a mango, but then the gods punished him for it. And this is a perfect example of why I really want Indian creators to do videos about Monkey Man explaining these sort of cultural aspects of the story, the artwork and so on and so forth, because the way the story hit my ears, if he thought he was eating a mango, I don't understand why he got in trouble. And this is a genuine question. I don't want any Indians thinking that I'm being disrespectful. I just genuinely would like more information because this was not a story that I was already familiar with. We cut to Kid in present day. He's in a sort of underground fight club, except it's not a free for all. There's a clear division between the people who fight and the people who are there to watch, spectate, place bets, all of those things. I really like the monkey mask that Dev wears. I think that it's probably a deceptively expensive or perhaps I should say well-crafted mask because it's a mask that has to fit Dev properly. And not only that, they have it to where he can see out of the mask. And moreover, we can see his eyes. So we have these really powerful shots at different points in the film where we can see him wearing the mask, but we can also see his eyes. And just the look overall makes a powerful statement. Admittedly, a fair bit of the acting comes from Dev's physicality. He's saying something with his body, but it's also a lot coming from the eyes. And I know that there's intention when it comes to the mask and the eyes, because when you see a kid take off the mask for the first time, baby boy's got eyeliner on. And this brings us to my first point about Dev Patel needing to be in a rom-com. What about Dev Patel doing something decidedly theatrical? Like a rom-com with Baz Luhrmann vibes, fabulous outfits, men wearing eyeliner, something with the energy of Gene Kelly and the Pirate, except it's starring Dev Patel. I need this. Lord, have mercy. Jump ahead to Dev Patel going to a bar to meet a child who's going to give him some intel, and I was shaken to my core by how good Dev's hair looked. It was giving coconut oil and hot girl vibes. But it's basically just coconut oil and prayer. Is coconut oil? Yeah, I do, I do coconut oil. 
Yeah, I, I love that you do fail. Dev Patel is a hot girl. And what I mean by that is he's so pretty that there are people who will just get jealous and hateful because they're insecure about how hot he looks. They did the same thing to Austin Butler. Dev Patel running his hand through his hair, all I could think was put him in a rom-com. One of the things that makes Dev Patel's character kid the most uncomfortable is when he sees a woman having to placate an entitled rich man because she is being held captive by this system and exploited for her looks and her body. It really deeply upsets him and he has to walk out of the party and go pacing outside. A man who respects women? Put him in a rom-com. There is a point where he is rescued by a group of trans women. I've seen some tweets floating around about this particular plot point. I believe they're called Hydra, but I don't want to say too much about that because I'm not informed enough to speak on that. So again, if any Indian creators would like to do videos explaining things from Monkey Man, please go for it. But anyway, Dev Patel got rescued by these trans women, Hydra, and they treat his wounds. They give him a place to recover from his injuries, reflect on his journey, on his vengeance quest, and get back to training so that he will be battle ready to go after the bad guys once again. Dev Patel, action star, leading man, story by Dev Patel, directed by Dev Patel. Him training and then ripping his shirt open and immediately being cheered and applauded by a group of women. Dev Patel is a man who knows his audience. Hot Girl Summer, Dev Patel Summer, that is the same thing with just two different names. Two sides of the same coin. Dev Patel knows damn well that the romance girlies want him in a rom-com and as an internet commentator who was championing Anyone But You for months before it was released, before it became the biggest sleeper hit of the year, before it became the last film standing out of the massive holiday rush of December 2023 releases, trying to get the audience into their cinema showings, I will loudly co-sign the rabbit demand for Dev Patel needing to be in a rom-com. The film made a point of mentioning a news story about a hate crime attack on trans women. I forget where they said it was. Maybe it was in the north. Maybe they named a specific city. I've only seen the film once at the cinema at the time of recording this, so I didn't manage to catch that particular detail in my notes that I was taking, but the same trans community is the one to take him in. And not only that, Dev Patel goes back to the underground fight club, wins spectacularly after betting on himself, and donates the majority of those winnings to those hydra that saved him. I don't remember the exact details of if it was for rent or if it was to pay off the people that were trying to kick them out of their sanctuary or if it was just funds to help them start a new life elsewhere. Either way, he was helping them out. They helped him, so he helped them. That's how things should be. But if that wasn't enough, I guess Dev Patel took just a few bills for himself from this winning amount so he could go do his final vengeance mission while dressed in a fabulous black suit. This is a man who knows to serve us fashion looks. And you know where else you could get the girls quaking because you wore a fabulous outfit? In a rom-com. And because this film keeps reminding us that no man is an island, the Hydra roll up during the fight and help him when he's facing off against a pack of bad guys that came storming out of an elevator. You are not for one second going to tell me this last extended fight series was isn't for the girls. Dev Patel wearing a black on black suit and his squad of badass Hydra rolling up in fabulous outfits. I don't know what the outfits are called, but any Indians who saw the movie, you can let me know in the comments what that type of attire is called. But anyway, they unleash a beat down on the bad guys together. In general, I love this recurring sentiment of the importance of community. It even goes back to that part of the film, which was really cool, where the people band together to help get a phone to Dev. Excellent filmmaking and editing for that sequence. But the fact that all of these people would band together and collaborate just to help Dev Patel get this phone that he needs to infiltrate this bad guy organization, it's such a love letter to humanity itself and what people are capable of when they care for each other. And that's an emotional note that is present throughout the entire film. Dev Patel is so focused on revenge, but we still see collaboration with others, getting money for the Hydra, feeding a stray dog, and then the dog helps him on his vengeance quest. And by the way, if you're watching me talk about all these spoilers without having seen the film first, the dog is fine. Nothing happens to the dog. That was the most stressful part of watching Monkey Man for me. When they introduced a dog, I was terrified that the film was going to do something bad to it. But thankfully, nothing bad happens to the dog. Dev Patel getting emotionally disrupted when he's doing recon because he respects women. So true, Dev Patel. So true. And the final thing I want to highlight that proves to me that Dev Patel is for the girl. When he uses a sparkly women 
Damon Shu to beat the brakes off the bad guy cop that Kay warded his mother. Dev Patel, thank you for doing it for the girlies like myself who like romance and revolution. So this movie was giving revolution, therefore next up, you need to do the romance. Does anyone have Sydney Sweeney's phone number? How about Jennifer Lawrence? Any of these girlies who were in the business of developing movies for the girls that ended up being in my top five films of 2023, it's time for you to do your thing once more and this time produce a Dev Patel rom-com. It's the perfect time to pitch a rom-com after anyone but you blew up the box office and Dev Patel is the internet's boyfriend right now with all of this monkey man promo making the rounds online. Get to it. Thank you all for watching. Donation links for Palestine are in my description box and I'm assuming my next video will be about Bridgerton season three. It's really any day now that I'm expecting we will get a season three trailer. I am seated and I'm ready to watch. Thanks to my patrons and until next time, bye. This film just by grace with energy and soul and insane action. Hopefully you guys will come along for the ride with us.